So welcome to our Friday Market Insights video for April the 16th, 2021. My name is Mary Lee Miles. I'm a partner and director of wealth management here at Genis. And with me today is Justin Hahn, our macro research analyst. And I'm here to ask him a few questions. Many of these questions came from our clients. So Justin, although I see you virtually every weekday morning when the investment team and the portfolio managers receive our morning update, I realize I've not seen you in person for over a year. Anyway, it's nice to be on the video with you this week. So from the market perspective, we continue to be at all time highs, particularly in the US. So what's been happening in the markets this week? Yeah, so this week we saw the markets continue its strength from last week as the strong earnings season begins. The NASDAQ, which is the more tech-centric index, was up to new highs following last week's S&P rise to new highs. From a macro perspective, we saw CPI inflation rates uh, come in at about 2.7% on a year-over-year basis, which is higher than expectations, as well as retail sales rebound from February's negative contraction up about 9.8% versus the 5.5% expectations. This was mainly driven by the stimulus checks that were sent out last month and a lot of spending in that area. So just to clarify, the CPI is the consumer price index that you're talking about, sort of measure of inflation. That's great, Justin. So with earnings seasons arriving, so this is when all our companies are reporting their profits or losses, um, and the market's at historical highs, is there a risk of disappointment? Yeah, given the strength of the market rebound last year and the strong investor sentiment we have currently, there is room for some disappointment in some companies, particularly in more of the technology sector. However, we expect strong earnings overall uh, due to the successful vaccine rollout in the U.S. uh, with Biden's plan and the reignition of the economy from all the stimulus that's been spent. The S&P this uh, quarter is expected to earn over 24.5% on a quarter over quarter basis. So there are very high expectations for this quarter. I know that last week on the video, and I do watch them myself, uh, that you've mentioned uh, that um, we have trimmed back some equities in our clients' portfolios. Are you considering thinking that that's going to continue? Yeah, so last week we did make some big moves in our portfolios. We moved uh, quite a bit of equities off the table into cash because of our models changing, but we're comfortable with the moves that we made during the last week and where we're at given all of our model signals. This next month will be a telling sign of what's going to happen. A lot of our signals did move quite significantly, so we're going to see if we get any reaffirmation or confirmation from the signals uh, that which continue in that same path, or if we get a bit of a reversal, and this month was a one-off month uh, based on some of the economic numbers coming out. Yeah, it's been an um, interesting few weeks. So given the bailout the federal government is giving Air Canada, uh, two questions here. So what is that signal to the market, and do we own airline stocks in clients' portfolios? Yeah, so the recent $5.4 billion bailout for Air Canada signals to the markets that air travel and vacation travel through airlines is not yet ready. Um, It's still in the pre-COVID levels. People are still very reluctant to go into that space. Um, With the $5.4 billion includes some Uh, some restrictions where the airliners must rehire again, as well as increase some of the regional travel as well. Um, For our portfolio wise, we're on the same boat. A lot of our models still give these companies quite low scores. So we haven't stepped back into airline space yet. And we still believe it's still premature to enter into the space, maybe give it another few quarters or even a year until the whole economy and borders open up again. Yeah, part of that loan and equity bailout package was included um, um, being able for consumers to get some of their Air Canada credits back. I know I'm applying for that this weekend. So, so what? although Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve have indicated they plan to stay the course over the next three years, actually, inflation pressure is still abound, like you were mentioning earlier. So what does that mean to the bonds in our clients' portfolios? Yeah, so we saw the bond market currently pricing in the first rate hike to be about 2023 uh, versus the Federal Reserve, which have planned it to be about 2024. This saw bond yields rise during the last quarter um, and and through the end of last year as well. And in turn, that caused prices to fall. 
In the short term, if the Fed does hold steady at their 2024 projections, we expect bond yields to come back a bit and prices to rise uh, as a result of that. But we still think that there's still a lot of information that needs to come out on the economic side, such as inflation rates, to see if this is sustained at a 2.5% level and see how the Fed will react. We have seen historically that the Fed does react, uh, sorry, the bond market does react before the Fed. And it is a bit telling that investors are pricing in a stronger economic recovery. Yeah, I, it doesn't uh, quite feel like the inflation of the uh, you know, past uh, few decades at all from that perspective. So we don't think we're going to be seeing like double digit interest rates anytime soon. As far as um, Coinbase, a cryptocurrency exchange opened this week with 100 billion in market capitalization and it's all over the news on this subject. So what does that mean for our clients and do we own any of these cryptocurrencies? Yeah, so we don't personally hold any cryptocurrencies in any of our portfolios or our funds. Uh, we believe it's quite a volatile stock or asset class per se, um, and it's still a lot of risks there in terms of regulations. Um, you could see some of these currencies rise 10, 15% per day in either direction, which is extremely volatile and impossible to predict. The recent IPO of Coinbase allows investors to get into the space, but indirectly, Coinbase is just a exchange so similar to how the S&P Global provides exchanges um, for people to trade in. So its current valuation of $100 we think is a bit steep, um, but and it's also higher than a lot of the other exchanges that we have seen um, that are more developed, uh, such as the S&P Global. Right, right. Just seems a little speculative. So that so Bitcoin, is that the number one currency being traded on that exchange right now? Yep, that is uh, that is the biggest coin out there uh, that's in the news everywhere. And uh, we see it continuously go up and then crash and then it's in a little cycle. Yeah, like day trading or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that concludes our video for this week. Thanks, Justin. As always, you've given us lots to think about. Um, thank you all for watching. Please do reach out to your portfolio manager if you've got any questions. For those of you new to Jenna, please visit our newly updated website to find out more and connect with our team. And as we head to spring rolling out in full bloom, at least here in the lower mainland of BC, let us continue our hope for successful vaccination rollout. I know we're now over 20% in the population in BC uh, with one dose and longer days of sunlight and the possibility too of seeing each other in person later this year. So have a good week. Thanks, everyone.